Hello everyone, this is Minion speaking. Welcome to the today's bootleg breakdown program, where today we're going to cover the Legend Creation take on the SH Figurettes Super Saiyan Broly full power figure. Now, just to kind of do a cursory explanation of what you expect out of the packaging, basically all the official logos are going to be gone on here, replaced with the limited Legend Creation mark on there. And the only somewhat surprise out of this particular recent set is that this particular figure does actually have a makeshift copy of the instruction manual or instruction paper, whatever you want to call it, as well as amusing enough, an advertisement for the movie Brawly figures. Which is funny because they don't even have a Super Saiyan Blue Goku clone as of yet. In terms of general height, this particular figure stands at, I'm going to say, roughly 8.5 inches at this point. And in terms of his general articulation, unfortunately it's kind of what you expect out of all the recent clones, namely... Uh, the shoulder articulation is completely absent. You don't have your, what would have been an oversized butterfly joint in this case. Instead, it's a double-winded ball peg. And uh, the torsos themselves, you can kind of tell from the get-go, are kind of more solid chunks, which means a lot of the middle articulation is missing too. However, in terms of the uh, elbows and wrists, they seem to work well enough or at least have decent enough motion on them. Elbows are maybe a little simplified in this case, and admittedly in my case, they're actually really stiff to move, I find but otherwise functional. The leg or the hip joints are actually a little more interesting on this particular large figure than they were on even like the Boo figure in this case because technically they're functional. They actually have surprisingly good range in this case and hold their poses really well. But part of the reason they're holding the poses so well is because they're not standard joints or even the regular clone joints they've been using up to this point. They're actually ratchet joints in this case. So you'll have a notable clicky sound when you're moving them around and they will click into place and hold their position very well. Uh, moving on from there, of course, we have the knee joints themselves. They're a bit simplified, a little uh, kind of a less than polished versions of the real ones in this case, but they're totally functional. The shin joints, it looks like they stick out a bit, but admittedly on the real one, they do stick out a bit on there as well, so it's not the worst surprise there. And uh, unfortunately, what's kind of a bog standard for these kind of bootlegs is that the toe joints, they just plain don't work very well. So that's not exactly a huge surprise there. Uh, I'd say the only thing is, because obviously they're using fake articulation, or the wrists on mine are a little loose. So that's a bit of a problem on there. That can be fixed, though, once we figure out exactly how that's working. And the, uh, to kind of showcase, the neck joint is working just fine. Now, for more of a direct comparison, as you can kind of see, the real figure is going to be on the right over there, the bootleg on the left. So the bootleg, just like in the other cases here, the bootleg is slightly shorter than the real deal. And, of course, in terms of the detailing, it's softer detailed because a lot of these pieces have been recasted. And recasted slightly smaller as well, which is why the scale is slightly off. And as you can kind of see, and now kind of, if I can keep it in focus well enough, you can kind of see there's definite issues with the detailing here and there. And these are a little more apparent on there, but everything is a bit softer as well as a bit smaller. And the torso is notably smaller because they obviously cheaped out on the real articulation points. Now, if you're looking to see if you can use the bootleg brawly hands in order to fit on the real one, technically you can on there, but you will need to modify the openings in order to fit on the real deal. In this case, since they're not a perfect match. However, they should be functional enough. Once I can get the, getting the real Brawly sand, he's a bit top heavy, so we kind of hide there. And you can kind of see the real one is a bit bigger, if anything, or actually, let me see. I think it might be getting it, but they are slightly different size. I think the fake one is a bit smaller, so you can technically open it up in order to extend it on there. So at least if you really needed to replace the hands for some reason, you can do that. And in case you're wondering, in terms of the faces, you can actually get the fake bootleg faces to fit on the real one, but they're not going to be quite a perfect fit in anything. If anything, like I said, they've been slightly recasted. Well, they have been recasted, period, I should really be saying. So on top of the loss of detail, the uh, recasted heads are slightly smaller on there. The pegs don't fit on there quite right, but once you get the uh, the rest of the hair on there, they will go on there just fine. But the uh, the issue with the, slight re with the uh, recasting and the slight size change is... Uh, along the hairline, you will notice there's a little bit of a gap on there, just because they're a smidge smaller than what they should be. However, if you want to modify the faces on the bootleg in order to fit something else, or you just lost your real face, it's functional at the very least. Admittedly, there's not too much to talk about in terms of accessories on this particular figure, just because even the real one didn't come with a lot of accessories. But the one thing I probably want to make note of is, in terms of the hands at least, on my particular bootleg, I found because of the... Uh, kind of a clearance issues that the hands were having on certain bits there. Uh, actual openings were a little smaller than probably what they should have been, at least in my case. 
the hands are occasionally a little hard in order to actually get and keep on the ball pegs on there and that's because you have to actually apply quite a bit of force in order to get there or realistically you probably want to dip these things in hot water for a little bit in order to soften them up in order to get them to fit properly now in this case you can kind of see I'm messing around the hand there it looks like it's not quite a good fit and that's just because I haven't applied enough pressure in order to get that so it wasn't fully on there for a part of this footage on there but once you do get it on there these things tend to stay on pretty well now as we're going to the breakdown set of this particular video uh, it's worth noting I have to give credit where credit is due this figure was definitely assembled to be very hard to separate actually everything is holding really well together on this figure and I actually had to resort to dipping the whole figure basically in hot water just to get this thing separated for the next little clips here and part of the reason why as it turns out is everything is basically held together with these giant ball pegs which I honestly have never seen anything this big in fact I couldn't actually even get the legs to fully separate but at least it's separate enough where you can really see how the ratcheted joints kind of fit in there which while they're definitely not standard and not what the real figure uses, admittedly for the bootleg, I can say that they did pick at least the right type of joint because they do give an excellent range of motion in this case, and they do a really good job of holding the figure up in this case. They really support the weight well. Now in terms of the rest of the body, the, all these double-ended ball joints do take things a little bit of a weird assembly. Like I can tell you the real figure doesn't have a neck joint or a head joint quite like that. It's actually kind of a weird circular joint that is actually really hard to pull out. Of course, you can see the upper torso, not on top of being just smaller than normal, is completely filled in and using just ball pegs to hold everything together in this case. Which unfortunately means the figure is a little more limited in range. And in terms of the way the uh, biceps and uh, forearms are assembled, it's relatively close to what the real one has, although these elbow joints are definitely simplified versions of what the real ones are. And also incredibly tightly fitted on at least one side on each one of them as it turns out. Which explains why I was having so much trouble moving the elbows earlier. So I'm definitely going to have to figure out a way to loosen that a bit. But not too much because in terms of everything else the elbow joints are mostly functional. Just a bit tight. That's If that's the only issue I have I can kind of live with that. While there definitely is a little bit of a loss of articulation just because of the way the upper body has been assembled on here. Generally speaking, Broly here isn't actually a half bad pick, especially compared to all the other bootlegs we've been looking at as of late. Probably the best of the recent lot, I'd even say. So if you need a filler piece, I'm not going to say I recommend, but at least it's worth considering. Uh, speaking of things for your consideration, join us on the next bit where, uh, for our next video, we actually got a viewer request in and mail recently, so we're going to take a look at the bootleg Golden Frieza on our next episode. For now, catch you all later.